Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here today. It is Trinity Sunday, so we uh, learn a little bit more about who our God is and why that is important that we understand and believe in the triune God today. It's also our uh, celebration for our staff today. We have several staff that we want to recognize today for anniversaries of service here at Peace, as well as farewell to some who have served here and no longer will be with us in service at, at Peace Lutheran. So we'll, we'll discuss that and share that and celebrate that a little bit later in today's service. Uh, also, special welcome to those watching online, and if you haven't done so, there should be a little way to register your attendance here, too, online. You can just click the link that's there, and also pass the red record of fellowship along in your pews this morning. Um, I want to mention that uh, the Orphan Grain Train uh, in-gathering is happening once again this year, and we'll be taking stuff up to pick a roll in a couple weeks, so note that announcement in your bulletin that you can drop off things that will be shipped internationally to help those in need. Um, Orphan Grain Train has been involved over in helping with Ukraine relief and other things, so if you would like to donate to that cause, please note that in your bulletin. And it's also a big week because uh, Mission Anigo is coming up here starting tomorrow, so Vicar Jacob, how's that all looking and what's in store for us? Mission Anigo is looking great. We are in store for a really great week. I was looking at the forecast. Seems like we're going to have some good work days ahead of us too, which is awesome. That's really nice. Um, I've had a couple people ask me where we are meeting, which that's a phenomenal question. We are meeting at 7.30 a.m. at Anigo Community Church. And so if you have volunteered or if you want to volunteer, because there is still time to sign up, you can actually sign up each morning the day of uh, to sign up 7.30 a.m. at Anigo Community Church. And if you have... Or if you've listened to one of my announcements and said, hey, I think I have that piece of equipment like that pressure washer or that ladder or anything else, go ahead and bring that Monday morning too. Uh, there's really no place to put it at Anigo Community Church the night before. Uh, so just bring it that morning of whenever you might show up and then just go ahead and take it on home with you too <laughs> and then bring it back the next day uh, so that we can use that again. But it's looking like it's going to be a great week. There's some good projects. It's going to be a good time to work in yards and also share the love of Jesus with our community. It's going to be a good week. And there's going to be water provided, right? There will be tons of water provided. Yeah, we actually have specific volunteers for that. Oh, nice. That's great. All right, excellent. Well, let's take a moment to stand and greet those around you as we begin today's time of worship. Let's say our Bible verse of the week together. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. We begin this time of worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
Together we confess our sins to God. Holy and gracious triune God, I confess, I confess that I, I have sinned against you, some of the sin I know, the thoughts and actions of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. To you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I seek forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in your peace. Renew me, that the desire of my heart may be to keep your commandments, and that I may be holy and righteous in your sight. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a servant of Christ, know that your sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of eternal Trinity. By the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty, keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God now and forever. Amen. We now ask that anybody who might be volunteering for Mission Anago would come forward, and we will have a brief commissioning service. So if you are volunteering this week in Mission Anago, please come on down to the front, and we will ask God to bless our time of work this week as we are in the community sharing the love of Jesus with people and also working in people's yards. So come on down. Hey, you can go ahead and stand in front of the baptismal font too. Right on down. All right. All right. Dear, Christ, dear Christian friends, through holy baptism, our Heavenly Father set us free from sin and made us members of the family of God. Through Jesus Christ, we have been transformed into, into new creatures, and together we share in the ministry of the church, using the talents, abilities, and spiritual gifts that God has provided us. We are called by the Holy Spirit to offer ourselves as living sacrifices and thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us. You have committed yourselves to be servants of our Lord Jesus Christ as you serve our community in the name of Christ through our Mission Anago Week. Are you willing to follow through with this commitment in service to God's people and his church? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Are you willing to use your gifts and abilities according to the grace given you as all of us are commended to do in 1 Peter 4, verse 10, which reads, Each one should use whatever gift he has, he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. And in the way, share the love of Jesus Christ with others through your words and actions, and with one another. If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Are you willing to be representatives of this congregation and furthering the mission of this church, which is to strengthen one another in Christ, so that we share his love and good news with everyone. If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. With these promises and the support of your brothers and sisters in Christ, here at Peace Lutheran Ministries, as well as with the strength God will provide, I commission you for this special week of service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Today is a special day, Lord, as we commission these servants before your altar. Help them to be a blessing in a special way to your people in this community, our neighbors, and our friends. Lord, we ask you to calm their fear, fears, nervousness, and apprehensions as they prepare for this exciting mission. Fill them with zeal and energy to carry out the various work projects, and as they do good in your name for others. Be with them in their work, keep them safe, and remind them of your presence each day of this adventure. Open doors to share the good news of your salvation in your redeeming work. Help them to remember that they can do all things because you strengthen them. We ask all this in the name of our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide, bless, and keep you, that you may be faithful in your service to the Lord. Amen. You may return to your seat.
continue with our epistle reading. And the epistle reading for this morning comes from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I now ask any children who might be with us this morning to come forward for a message, a children's message by Mr. Reineke. I was looking around. I didn't really see too many children today. But we'll do a little message anyway about that. So Trinity Sunday, I was trying to think of a good way to talk about the Trinity Sunday, and Pastor Dave does a great job with the sermon with that, so I won't have a really long children's message, but I have a shape with me, which is, and he probably doesn't know what shapes are yet, so. <laughs> so this is a triangle, right? So three sides, one shape, one, uh, one thing here, but it helps me to kind of understand with the three different sides, it's three but one. That's what Trinity is, three and one. And that's what our God is, is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And as I was thinking about this, this is a beautiful church, beautiful sanctuary, the stained glass windows. And maybe you've noticed a little bit about what the windows represent. We have the uh, Word and Sacraments over on this side. Uh, and over here, this main one is about the Holy Trinity. And so I wanted to refer to this window for the message this morning a little bit. Representing God the Father with the hand coming down, his creative power. Uh, God the Son with the cross, also the anchor uh, of our faith. The Holy Spirit, form of the dove, which showed up at Jesus' baptism. Um, and the Father, the voice of the Father, saying, This is my Son with whom I'm well pleased. And the overall general thing of that picture, too, is like a net. And then Jesus commissioned us to be fishers of men. And he does that through our God that we serve, who's taking care of all the things that we need to be saved. And so every week we can look at that and remember who we serve and worship is the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who is at work in our lives each and every day. So let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special weekend that we get to observe Holy Trinity Sunday. We pray that you bless us with your word that reveals that you are Father, Son, Holy Spirit, not three gods, but one with one purpose, that's to love us and to bring us back into your family. So Lord, we thank you for all you do and for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And I guess you all probably... <laughs> thank you, Mr. Reineke. We continue with our gospel reading, so please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. 
The gospel for this morning comes from John chapter 8. The Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you have that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar, like you. But I do know, but I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the, glory, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <coughs>
Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As uh, Mr. Reineke mentioned, and also you can see in the front of your bulletin, it is Trinity Sunday. So hopefully you took time, you set up your Trinity celebration tree, you put some ornaments on it. Maybe you have your get-together get today after the church where you exchange gifts for Trinity. Um, family comes from far and near, right, to celebrate Trinity Sunday? Well, probably for most of us, or maybe all of us, that doesn't happen, right? We don't really treat Trinity Sunday like we maybe would Christmas or Easter. So what's the big deal, though, about the Trinity? In fact, what we're going to confess after this sermon, we're going to take a little bit of an excerpt out of the Athanasian Creed, which is one of the three creeds that we subscribe to as Lutheran Christians. And in the Athanasian Creed, it says... We must believe in the Trinity to be saved. So it's a pretty important doctrine. In fact, it is the doctrine of God um, that unless we hold, we perish. So who is this Trinity? And what matter does it really make, right? Well, there's a lot of other religions in the world. You know, you're familiar with uh, Islam. And Islam claims that Jesus is a great prophet uh, in fact, they would say that Jesus is the second greatest prophet uh, behind Muhammad, uh, and so they subscribe a lot of uh, kind of credit to Jesus and for all of his miracles and the things that he did to help other people. They would say that he uh, died a sacrificial death on the cross, but no resurrection belief in Jesus. 1.8 billion people in our world subscribe to this religion, by the way, of Islam. Then there's uh, Hinduism. Hinduism has a billion followers, mostly in India, but also, uh, if you look at map, it was kind of interesting, I looked this up, but in, in the United States, is, uh, there's a pretty significant Hindu population also. So they see Jesus as one of many gods. They believe in actually millions of gods, and Jesus is one of those. And he's seen as the healer god, so he's the god that you pray to if you're sick, like we're going to do here in a few minutes, right? We always have prayers for sick, for the, those who are having surgery, recovering from injuries, all of those kind of things. So you'd pray to Jesus... Basically just for that, but not the Savior, the redemptive Savior God as we would see Jesus as. And then there's a whole range of other religions out there. You know, Buddhism has a half a billion followers too, which is an offshoot of Hinduism, um, trying to achieve nirvana through your meditation and, and those kind of things. Or you have Mormonism and Jehovah Witnesses who believe Jesus, again, was kind of a great person, Maybe you even would ascribe the word God to him, but not God in the sense of Trinity God, but really one of many gods, and maybe you can become one too, would be the Mormon faith. Or was Jesus just an example of how we too can live? And then there's these offshoot religions, you know, things like Scientology. You know, I, I had to mention this because uh, Tom Cruise is in the news again with his latest movie, you know, but he was probably one of the most outspoken uh, advocates of Scientology, which doesn't really believe too much about Jesus. It really talks about you achieving your potential so you can really be divine in your own sight and in this world. Well, it's important to know the true God, isn't it? You know, and that's really what Paul's talking about, or Peter actually uh, is talking about here in this Pentecost sermon in Acts chapter 2. You know, Peter has this this wonderful, uh, we learned about this last week, right? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. And the first thing they started to do is teach people about Jesus and who Jesus truly is. And uh, Peter makes this statement towards the end of his sermon in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost where he says, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him, Jesus, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. So it's of utmost importance in the mind and heart of the Apostle Peter that we understand who Jesus is, not just as a good man who died and was crucified, but also Lord and Christ. Lord meaning God, Christ meaning Messiah, the one who has promised the Savior throughout all the Old Testament prophecies, right? So knowing the true God especially means knowing Jesus to be the true God, and of course also the Father and the Holy Spirit. 
But those other religions, it's interesting, many of them claim to believe in a creator God. That's certainly true in Hinduism and the others. And some of those religions believe in a spirit God. I'm thinking kind of in uh, Native American um, religion uh, background. But to put it all together, you need to be Christian. Or maybe that's what makes you Christian, right? To believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three in one. It's kind of interesting. I teach the kids uh, in our preschool and, and uh, child care and, and uh, younger elementary ages, you know, kind of this uh, little play on your, using your fingers, you know, that God is three, and, but he's still one, right? Three persons, one God. It's interesting, the little kids just accept that. I mean, it's like we don't have to figure that all out, you know, and parse it down to the nth degree of how that really works. But we simply believe this is how God reveals himself in Holy Scripture as three in one. You know, we're doing our staff recognition today in a few minutes, too. There was a first grade teacher who was overseeing her students as they were learning the computer for the first time. You know, and uh, there was this one boy in first grade, and he was trying to figure it out. He was looking at the screen and he didn't quite know what to do, so he raised his hand, and he asked the teacher to come over, and the teacher said, what, you know, what's wrong? What, what do you need help with? And he said, um, the computer wants to know my name. And she said, well, just tell the computer, you know, your name is David. So he leans up towards the computer and whispered, my name is David. But what it was really asking for was his login, you know. He had to type his name in. But he thought, I want to get, to, the computer wants to get to know me, how nice. You know, what makes Christianity different from all the other religions is not only we have a triune God, but we have a personal God, a personal God who knows our name, and we know his name, right? In fact, he re reveals his personal name to us in the Old Testament when Moses was at the burning bush, and he said, I don't know who to tell the, the Pharaoh is sending me to let the people go. What's your name? And God said, I am who I am. Remember that? And that's the Hebrew name Yahweh, which is often translated just with the word Lord. Okay? And God actually reveals his personal name to us. We use the word Trinity to describe him. But his real personal name is Yahweh. And also, hey, we know the other names, right? God the Father. God the Son. His name is Jesus. And we use the word Christ to describe what he's done, Messiah, and also the Holy Spirit, right? We've got a personal God, three persons with personal names who knows our name, who comes to us in our baptism and knows us by name and invites us into his family as one of his own children. We don't have to make God more complicated, right? then he makes himself when he reveals himself to me. Sometimes I think we get into that, that struggle a little bit of trying to understand God. Um, and, uh, and we simply need to go back to those scripture passages where God reveals himself, right? Um, like in Matthew 28, 19, we have, we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And notice, by the way, it doesn't say names. It's not plural. It's singular, name. The name of God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And he has this unity about him revealed in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, where God told his people that we are to confess, know, and believe that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now, behind that word Lord, L-O-R-D, remember, it's the word Yahweh. You know, this is God's personal name, Yahweh. He is the Trinity. He is Trinity. I've got this printer at my house, um, pretty much this exact model. So it's uh, HP, and it's, it's, uh, it does all, all the stuff you need, right? Uh, it's, in fact, this is described as an all-in-one printer. Did you ever hear that? All-in-one. Now, it works great when it works great. <laughs> Sometimes there's a glitch, right? Something goes wrong, I don't know, you run out of ink, or then all of a sudden, you know, it's not connecting with your device you're trying to print from. Um, but when it works great, it's great. It can scan and send an email, it can copy, put a piece of paper on there, it can copy it, and then you can print from your computer. It does all three things. It's a three-in-one printer. But what's different about this thing is it only can do one thing at a time. 
And uh, we need to remember that our God does all of his stuff all at the same time. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all active, and they are all there to help us. I, uh, um, uh, when I think about this, I think sometimes about the Apostles' Creed. You know, we confess the Apostles' Creed almost every Sunday in church. Not today, because I pull, pulled out the Athanasian, because it's a special day, um, uh, but the Apostles' Creed, right? One sentence for God the Father. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, right? We express confidence in God as the creator. But then we have this long paragraph in the middle all about Jesus, right? We need to know who Jesus is, what he did to save us. And so we have that second article of the creed, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, etc., etc., right? And so we have that, that center part that sets us apart as Christians knowing who Christ is. And then we finish with the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, right? So we have all three persons of the Trinity in that one creed that we confess. And each of their specific works or responsibilities, maybe is the way to think about it, right? God the Father, the Creator. Though Jesus was there, and the Holy Spirit was there at creation, they're all there, but it was kind of his special work. Jesus, special work, redemption. He's the one who went to the cross and rose from the dead for us. We'd have salvation and forgiveness of sins. And then the Holy Spirit, sanctifier. He makes us holy. He gives us God's gifts of grace. That's his special job. Point us to Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit is meant to do. Point us to Jesus. There was a famous Christian apologist. His name was C.S. Lewis. Some of you are familiar with him. He wrote a great little book, and if you haven't read it yet, you should read it. It's called Mere Christianity. I had to read it when I, I think, the first, one of the first religion classes I took in college. But it's meant for kind of all of us to be able to read. You don't have to be a pastor to understand it. But um, this is one of the quotes from Mere Christianity, which is kind of a, a book about, you know, what matter does it, what does it matter that we believe Jesus is our Savior? And he wrote, a man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. Um, he would either be a lunatic out of his mind on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell, or he's going to be the real thing. Right? This Jesus, by the way, in today's gospel reading, right? What happened? The Pharisees thought Jesus was demon-possessed. He's got to be of the devil, these things that he's saying and doing. Or else he truly is God. Or else he's out of his mind. One of those three, right? Of course, we know the truth. Jesus is who he said he is. He is our Savior. There was an old man who was dying, and he was visited by a friend who asked him, Have you made your peace with God? And the man replied, No, I haven't. And then his friend said, what? You've got to make your peace with God before you die. And the dying man said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. His friend said, but you must. Don't you know it's dangerous to die without making peace with God? And to this the dying man said, how can I make peace with God? He already made peace with me 2,000 years ago when he went to that cross and paid for my sins. And I simply believe it because he's given me faith. So we have peace with God, God's gift through his son, Jesus. So this Holy Trinity thing, does it matter? Yeah. I mean, you might even want to set up a tree at your house and put ornaments on and celebrate the Holy Trinity, right? It matters because this is our salvation. This is the one and only true God. This is the one who gave his life and rose from the dead and comes to us personally and knows our name and brings us into his family and has made a place in heaven for our eternal life in his presence. One last story. There was a young man who stopped by, uh, who uh, actually worked at a, a medical clinic and uh, he came in for his usual uh, actually, there was a doctor who worked at the medical clinic, and there was a young man who came in for his usual uh, cancer treatment. You know, he's terminally ill, and he came in for his treatment, and the person who was treating him was brand new, you know, just hired, 
and he really wasn't good with bed, bedside manners yet. And so the, the guy who was giving this cancer patient the treatment said, well, you know you're going to die in the next year, don't you? And it just kind of cut that, that young man to the heart who had cancer. And so he stopped by the director's office on his way out, and he said, you know, that, that uh, person who had administered my treatment just took my hope away. And the director said, well, I guess he did. We'll have to have a chat with him about that. But where, where truly is your hope? And it made him think, you know, beyond this life, we have hope. We have a hope in a God who cares about us, who gives us eternal life, who forgives our sins, who comes into our life personally, who wrote us his love letter, the Holy Scriptures and the Bible, so we could be assured of his promises. We have hope beyond this life. We have hope in the God who cares for us for eternity, who told us that the Father's house has many rooms, and if it were not so, he would have told us, and he's going to Made, make a place for us, which he made through his life, death, and resurrection, and that on our last day, he's going to take us to be with him. So we have a father who cares, who sent his son as our savior, and a spirit who guides us into all truth and prepares us to live with him forever in paradise. That's the Trinity, and it makes all the difference in the world. So happy, holy Trinity Day to all of you. Enjoy the festivities. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now with our confession of faith and we will use this excerpt from the Athanasian Creed. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Christian religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The, the Father is not made, made nor begotten, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus, there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the, but the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and the unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ the Son of God is at the same time both God and man, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. This is the Christian faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. You may be seated. We ask that our offerings be brought forward at this time. We thank you for the support that you have given to Peace Lutheran Ministries here. The opportunities to give are at the door and then also for those online. Here too, uh, there's the opportunity at peaceanago.org on our website. We pray. Triune God, we thank you for calling us by holy baptism and bringing us into your holy presence, placing your name on us and making us a follower of your son Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would receive these offerings this morning, that others may continue to learn about you as the Holy Trinity, as a God who loves them, blesses them, and gives them hope in this life and in the eternity. 
All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. recognize some of our staff this morning who serve here at Peace Lutheran. Uh, I'm going to invite Jim Henning to come forward. Jim is our vice president of our congregation, also serves on our, as part of that, serves on our mission and ministry team, and also is on the school leadership team. Uh, and as some of you know, uh, Jim is a retired Lutheran school principal, so that's appropriate too at this time. Um, I don't know if you know that, but we have uh, over 50 staff people that are on our staff here at Peace Lutheran, and we have the opportunity to celebrate anniversaries of ministry. Um, so we have changed our policy a couple of years ago where we do that every five years um, because that's pretty significant, uh, five years of service in the Lord's work here at Peace Lutheran. And we want to uh, recognize those anniversaries of ministry today as well as say farewell to staff uh, who God has led to other endeavors uh, beyond peace here in the coming year. So I'm going to invite the following to please come forward at this time if they're present here at the service. Um, uh, Kim Burns was unable to be with us because of her father-in-law passing away and the funeral being down in Kansas, so she's still down there. Uh, but we're recognizing Kim Burns, Blake Brockman, Danielle Storch, Beth Lindner, Kay Kielman, uh, Jane and Dave Reinecke, um, and then also saying farewell to Shanties uh, Tarpey and Janet Waterhouse who were here the last couple of years helping out too in our school ministry. Good morning. All right, um, we have a, a little uh, service that we're going to do and then I have a few things that I'll be saying and ending up. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
With gratitude and joy, we give thanks this day for your years of service here at Peace Lutheran uh, in your various responsibilities, offices, and service to God. We praise the Lord that he has permitted you to serve his church faithfully and that he has sustained and supported you and blessed your service among us. Let us hear the word of the Lord from the book of Philippians chapter 1. Paul writes, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, through your holy apostle, you direct each person to use the gifts that he or she has received and to serve others with the strength that you provide. We give thanks to you for the faithful servant service of the servants that we are recognizing this day. We ask that you might bless them with wisdom and patience, with love and faithfulness to your word, that with gladness they may continue to serve you in the ways that you lead them in the years to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So a few things I want to say. First of all, Danielle's been on our staff here for five years, and uh, I'm going to have you just turn around so they can see you. So this is Danielle. Yeah, Danielle Storch. And uh, Danielle served in different capacities. She, uh, she's filled in as our office manager when we didn't have one. Uh, she serves primarily as our school administrative assistant. So you have school questions, you talk to Danielle, she knows most of the answers. And, uh, uh, and also she serves child care families. And the way things work in the office, in case you haven't figured it out yet, is everybody's kind of cross-trained. So sometimes Danielle is the only one in the office and she'll have to ha handle whatever the church questions might be, child care, school questions. Um, so they, all, they have a lot on their plate in our school office and we want to give thanks for Danielle's work. Um, I'm going to have Blake turn around. You can just stay turned around there, Danielle. <laughs> all right, so a few things about Blake. Blake graduated from Concordia University, Wisconsin in 2016, worked at Camp Luther for about six months and then we brought him here. Oh, nine months, sorry. Uh, and then uh, he came on staff here at Peace Lutheran, I guess at the beginning of the fall of 2017. And uh, so he's been on staff here. We called him as our Youth and Family ministry, uh, Ministries Director um, and also um, uh, does a lot of other things that you may not know here at Peace Lutheran. He, especially during COVID, when things had to transition, uh, Blake took on more responsibility with figuring out things like our live streaming, uh, working on our digital content, and we found out, we just did a ministry survey, by the way, that people are engaged in our ministry uh, online. Um, about, uh, I estimate, between 40 and 60 people every Sunday are watching us online. Um, and, uh, and also through our, our Facebook devotions and other online content. So Blake has a lot to do with that side of ministry also. Um, and does other things that I won't mention now. Uh, <laughs> so we want to give thanks for Blake's five years of service here at Peace Lutheran. Uh, and uh, almost six overall, I guess, uh, counting in the time at Camp Luther II. And then I'm going to have the Reinekees turn around together. Yeah, there you go. Um, so a few things about this couple. So we've got um, Jane, who graduated from Concordia St. Paul in 1990, uh, served uh, as a teacher in Chaska, right? Chaska, Minnesota, Pompano Beach, Florida, Oakler Lutheran School, and here at Peace Lutheran for the last 19 years. Uh, when she started teaching here at Peace, she was a release teacher for Dave Selmeyer, as Dave was our principal at the time, and Dave would teach uh, typically math and science, and Jane would teach the language arts and everything else, and social studies and whatever. Um, and, uh, and then when Dave retired in 2009, then Jane really became full-time teacher on our staff and has been ever since. Um, she does a lot here, you know, bell choir director, sub or she's our number one substitute organist, um, as well as uh, other stuff. So, um, again, the list could be long, but I'm not going to read the whole list. And then uh, 
And Dave here graduated from Concordia St. Paul in 1988, uh, served at Lutheran Island Camp, and then down at uh, Hope in Pompano Beach, Florida, and then Faith uh, Lutheran in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, as DCE in those places. Um, came here, uh, by the way, Jane is also trained as a DCE. I don't know if you know that background about her, but teacher and DCE. Dave is a DCE director of Christian education. Uh, came, uh, the Renikis came here back in 1998. And some of you know this about Dave, but you know, we went through the recession and things were kind of tough here at Peace. We had to do some staff reductions and his position here was eliminated. Uh, back about 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And uh, so he went and worked at Sartori for a year, learned a lot about cheese. So if you have questions about cheese, Dave can answer those, um, and winemaking. And, uh, and then came back, because we had a need for his new school administrator, so he kind of threw his hat in the ring, came on on kind of a temporary basis the first year, and the congregation decided to call him uh, as a tenured call as our, our, our Lutheran, uh, Lutheran school administrator. So we're thankful for Dave's 10 years of service as school administrator and 13 years as director of Christian education before that. So as a congregation, can we just take a moment to thank these servants who are with us today? <laughs> They each have prepared a five-minute speech that they're going to share. No, I'm just um, you guys can turn around. We have some things that we want to share with you today, um, and we're not going to hand out everything at this service because we're going to do it again at 10:30. So then, yeah. so, but we want to hand you a few things. We're going to do these certificates, but uh, as a little uh, thank you today, uh, as a, a staff remembrance. Uh, first, before we do the certificates, just to let you know what else you're going to receive from the congregation. This is from all of you, plus uh, Thrivent uh, also helped us with some Thrivent Action Team cards um, to get some things. But uh, Jane, this is gonna be your plant right here, yes, for you. And Danielle, you get to pick any of the other flowers that are up here to take home after the 1030 service, so we're just gonna leave up there for now. Blake, that, that uh, package of golf balls down there is for you, <laughs> because uh, I know you probably need them. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Dave, you know, Dave likes to golf too, so we got him a nice little golf shirt here. I tried to get him a Packer shirt because, you know, he grew up in a small town in Minnesota called Brewster, Minnesota, way back, way down southwest Minnesota, and I couldn't find a Packer shirt, but I got you a nice green shirt. I thought that was second best, you know, since he's a Vikings fan. And, um, and we got you a putter too, just to help out on the golf green, so we'll leave that back here for the next service too. Um, and then also a little something for the Rhine Keys to remember us, you know, as a congregation. Um, we also got you a little engraved plaque to take to uh, Alma with you. Your guys are moving to Alma, Wisconsin, so it has the front of the church and also the outside of the church and the words that are right up here above the cross where Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full from John chapter 10. So that's for you. And a little thank you on the back. So there you go. That's from the congregation. Um, and then you also have a little, uh, get some, uh, our policy also indicates that, you, that our staff are recognized with script gift certificates. And, uh, and uh, at significant anniversaries, like Jane's, for instance, which is 25 years of teaching overall, um, they also get uh, a financial bonus. So congratulations on that. Um, so we have some certificates we want to hand out with, uh, with kind of those special envelopes. Jim's going to help with that. So for Danielle, and congratulations. time with our prayers. We now take this opportunity to go to our God in prayer. 
in addition to what's listed in our, our bulletin, we do want to add a prayer of healing for a member who is in need of healing. We also want to add member Jane Flores to healing as well, and then also Helen Williams, who's the cousin of Howard Jansen and Chris Gundry, and then also a prayer for Kristen and Harlan this weekend. So we now we go to our God in prayer. Triune God, we thank you so much for blessing us, for placing your name on us in our baptisms, and for constantly bringing us closer to you through your word and through your sacraments. We ask that we would always be your children and that we would always recognize who you are and grow in love towards you and love towards one another as well. Lord, we ask that you would bless our peace family members today who are in need of healing, especially Charlotte Sinclair, Jeannie Strasser, Nancy Kelly, Mildred Strobel, Richard Gerguts, Jack Greening, Jeanette Camps, Tom Zaborowski, Bob Bresky, Jane Flores, and also a member who is in need of healing. Lord, we also ask that you would be with friends and family of members, Bonnie Fisher, grandmother of Anna Rustic, Nancy Martin, another grandmother of Anna Rustic, John Hoshik, friend of Pat McCone, Amanda Hunter, Dan Shrimp, who is a friend of Terry Coltruck, Dennis Paff, be with Cullen Williams, cousin of Howard and Chris, and be with Kristen and Car Carlin during this time as well. Lord, you have in fact called us by the waters of holy baptism. We ask that you would bless these peace family members who we name before you that they might grow in love towards you. These peace family members we name are Gordon and Lisa Neve, Ashley Neve, Rhonda and TJ Newsom, Mark and Bonnie Nyforth, Jeff and Jeffrey and or, yeah, Jeffrey and Sandra Nielsen. Lord, we also thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of the birth of Sophia Christine Reinecke, born to Pastor Joseph and Emily Reinecke, this past Wednesday on June 8, 2022. Lord, we also thank you for establishing peace between us through your son Jesus. We pray that you would be with all those who are working to establish earthly peace here on this earth. We ask that you would be with those listed as serving in our, or listing as serving in the military who are our friends and family at this time. Lord, we thank you for bringing us stewards of your good word, people who are working in this place to bring about the love of Jesus and share that with whoever might come into this place. We thank you for the staff who are celebrating uh, significant anniversaries today. And we also pray that you be with us and be with the Reinekes as we say farewell to them today. We ask that this time would be a time of blessing for them and a time of a goodbye, but uh, never, a, never a true goodbye, but a, a see you later. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would be with Mission Anago this week as we are serving our community in this way. May the people who are serving and our volunteers all share your love with whoever they might be with. Lord, all these things and whatever else might be on our hearts and minds, we ask and place it into your most gracious and merciful hands, asking it all in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. We now stand and pray together that prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray. Pray you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We ask that you would bless us as we go forth from this time of worship. We ask that you would always remind us that we are yours and you are ours. You are our God and we are your people. We ask that as we go into this world, we might share this message of love and hope with those around us. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.